Hi, and welcome to Blender Clinic. Today I'm going to be looking at shape keys and using them in a non-linear fashion. So uh, the problem with shape keys is that they are linear. Uh, well, it's not a problem, it's, it's a feature, it's, it's how they work. They move every vertices from point A to point B in a perfectly straight line, and that's great, except when you want them not to move in a straight line. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to illustrate that for you. Uh, I've got this face here, and... Um, Point A, if you like, the basis, the starting point, is the eye is open. And point B is the blink, where the eye is closed. Now, this is great because it gives you all the control. You can sculpt and put all the verts where you want them. But, unfortunately, halfway through the animation, the eyelid goes right through the eyeball. Now, this might not be the case with all of your uh, models because it's quite a big curve, big eyeball. It's quite stylized. So, um, it's very apparent with this model, which is why I'm using it to illustrate this feature or this technique. Um, so essentially what we need to do is we need to split this blink shape key into its X, Y, and Z components and then change the rate at which those shape keys react to uh, to the information being dialed in. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. You can do this manually, but it's a real ball ache. It's really, really, really hard, um, and I don't recommend it. So I'm actually using a script I found online many moons ago uh, called, it was, I think it was from a Shape Key Helpers add-on or something similar to that. Uh, it was by a guy called Jan Ott, who uh, created the actual script. And all I've done is, because I don't think he supports it anymore, I don't think he's, he's keeping it up to date, um, I, I took the initial script from that, tweaked some bits and bobs, updated it to work in the latest version of Blender and stuck it in this panel with a bunch of other tools that I've robbed from other um, members of the Blender Artist Forum and GitHub and so on. Uh, so all credit to them. This is just, yeah, this is just convenience that I've put it together. And I'll put that in the notes so that you can download it and it obviously installs like any other add-on. Anyway, XYZ shape keys. We'll select our blink and click the button. And now we've got X, Y, and Z shape keys. Uh, what does that mean? Well, if I dial it in, you can see that this is just the X translation. This is just the Y translation. And this is just the Z translation. Now, now we've got four shape keys, and that's more to animate, and it still doesn't change how anything looks. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to use this original shape key to trigger the other three shape keys. But we don't really need the transformation that's actually occurring in here anymore, so I'm just going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select everything. Actually, let's just do, do it right. Whoops. Select it all. So, yeah. Go into edit mode. Hit A to select all. Space to search, or if your key map is different to mine, then F3 to search. Type in blend from shape. And I'm going to be blending from the basis with a value of 1 and unticking add. And what that will do is it will basically make all the vertices in uh, the blink shape key go to the point they are in the basis shape key, which essentially removes any transformation. So as I dial this up, you can see it doesn't do anything anymore, which is what we want. So I'm going to right click on here, oops, gently. And I'm going to copy as new driver, and then I'm going to, again, my pen's got really sensitive today, I don't know why. Paste the driver, what is going on? Paste the driver into each of the X, Y, and Z shape keys. And now, when we dial up the blink, it dials in the other three for us, which is great, exactly what we want. Now, we're basically back to the start. We're back to where we, where we started. We've just got more shape keys. So um, what we need to do is I'm going to dial it, this into... 0.5, so it's halfway through, so it's where the trouble is, it's where the issue is, it's where the intersection's happening. And I'm going to open up my drivers panel here, and I'm going to go to these uh, these keys that we've created, these shape keys uh, drivers that we've created, and I'm going to hide the X and the Z because I want to focus on the Y axis right now. That's out this way, yeah? Um, so we don't actually need to, to code anything or put anything into there. We've got this curve, this response curve for our driver, so um, it's changing... Like, as we dial this into 0.5, you know, this is at 0.5, if I pull this curve around, you'll see that the value changes on the y-axis. Uh, but if we take it back down to 0, it's still at 0, and if we take it to 1, it's at 1. So it's changing the rate at which it responds, it's easing it in and out of that, that value. And so, uh, yeah, at 0.5, what we need to do, we just need to pull these handles around until they roughly mimic the... Uh, 
the curvature of our eyeball. Yeah? So it's quite a visual thing to do. And that looks pretty good to me. And we'll just dial it through and see if it, if it goes all the way through the animation quite nicely. It does. There's a little bit here where it's a little less than ideal. So, um, And the reason for that is this point here, this is one. And the maximum range of our eyelid, uh, of our eye shape key for our eyelid, is one. So if we go over here and we change the maximum range to, say, 1.4, then suddenly the eyelid can go past its 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 maximum deformation and it will extrapolate that to uh, to allow us to go past one. Yeah, so the, the deformation will continue. And that means that all of this curve rather because it was acting like this and going flat. Now it's going out, and that is good. So there it is, and then it curves back in on itself for the overhang of the eyeball. Genius, right? Hey, okay, so then uh, what else do we want to do? We might want to add a little bit of life to the X um, axis. So if, uh, if we go to about 0.5, uh, I know that the X axis wants to go this way a little bit. It doesn't need too much of anything. It's just to give it a bit of life, and we'll leave the Z as it is. Uh, we could, you know, change a little bit on the Z, but I mean, to be honest, you're kind of fighting against each other then. Uh, the different, you know, we'll leave one of them constant. You might as well. It makes sense. Uh, and there we go. That is a lovely little, uh, you know, lovely deformation um, and super simple now to animate. So we could like connect this to a bone that we could pull up and down and, and drive that animation. And it's going to be super stable. Um, but uh, we don't need to stop there. We don't need to stop there. We've got this lower lid, which isn't doing a whole lot of anything. So why don't we just uh, create another shape key We'll dial that up. Uh, um, we'll call it extra. I don't know, um, because I'm being a bit extra. And all I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to sculpt, because the sculpt will retain all of these shape keys, uh, deformation, we can see what's going on. And I'm just going to uh, maybe pull some of these up. Ooh. Let's make sure that we are... Yeah, no, that's, that should be fine. Okay. Actually, do you know what? I will do this in edit mode, because it's a little bit... Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm catching the top of the thing there. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to use a little bit of fall off. I'm just trying to push this together so that the lower part of our lid reacts a little bit, so it's got some life in it. And then I'll go into sculpt mode, and I will, I don't know, I'll use draw just to give it a bit of bulge. It's not enough strength. Mm. Basically, the bulge, I just kind of want to give it like a bit so it, it feels like fatty tissue pressing against each other. Ooh, I am not doing a good job. Inflate, maybe. There we go. Yeah. Okay, um, so that does that. And again, I can just copy as new driver, paste as paste the driver in. And then again, we've got this little extra thing. And I think what I'd like, oh, that's interesting. Let's delete that driver, I've screwed it up somehow. Um, copy as new driver, paste driver. There we go. Now it's now it's it's coming on. So I would like that just to come in at the very last moment. Yeah. And I'll probably tidy it up a little bit as well later, but I'm just going to put it all the way over like this. We'll hide the other ones so we're not accidentally affecting them. In fact, I could bring this down as a minus 0.5 and actually have it Go in the opposite direction a little bit. See what that looks like. So now it sort of it has a bit of um, almost anticipatory action. I'm not sure I like that.
So I'll just reset that to zero. But it's good to know that you can do that if, if you wanted that sort of thing going on. And obviously you can add a myriad of different um, uh, keys in there to do different things and trigger at different points in the animation. And I'm just going to show you with subdiv on and hopefully it'll all look good. There we go. So it's got some nice organic motion as compared to the linear motion that it would have had. And uh, yeah, and that's that's that really. That's that's the technique. Um, so as I said, I will include uh, a link to this script. But not all the functions in that might <laughs> work um, because there's been a couple of different experimental versions of Blender recently. I've been toying around with all of them. But uh, the XYZ shape keys works and I'll continue to update it as, uh, as I need to. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, that's something that you can use, and uh, I find it is a really powerful technique, and it, it's not something that I've heard of many other people doing. So um, there it is. I hope you find it useful, and uh, well, let me know in the comments. Take care.